Chapter 41 Meeting the Buddha when doubt is eliminated It is like the sagely wheel-turning king's prison, made of seven gems, which holds princes who have committed an offence. The prison has mansions with towers, magnificent palaces, tents decorated with jewellery, beds made of gold, railings, windows, couches and chairs, all made of rare and wonderful treasures. Their clothing and food are the same as the wheel-turning king, but their ankles are shackled with golden locks. Will the princes be happy in it? Maitreya said, No, world-honoured one. When they are confined, they do not feel at ease in their minds. They will try every expedient means to get out of that prison. They will even try to ask the courtiers for help, but they have little power to do so. Only when the wheel-turning king is pleased can they be set free. The Buddha told Maitreya, These living beings are just like those princes. They are trapped in their own suspicion and remorse. And although they are seeking the Buddha's wisdom and the great vast wisdom, they cannot bring forth unwavering belief in their own good roots. This belief will be initiated when they hear the Buddha's name. Though they are born in that country, they are confined in their lotus flowers and unable to leave. The placentas they are in can be regarded as gardens and palaces. Why? Because in there it is clean and without any kind of defilement. However, in five hundred years, they are unable to meet the Triple Jewel, attend on the Buddhas, and will be kept away from all the supreme good roots. This is their misery and the reason why they are not joyous. If these living beings can recognize their fundamental offenses, repent deeply, and determine to leave that place, they can do so when the offenses in all their past lives have been eliminated. They will then go and pay Buddha Amitabha a visit, and listen to his teaching of the sutras. Gradually they will be enlightened and become joyous, and will be able to universally make offerings to countless Buddhas and cultivate numerous merits and virtues. You, Ajita, should know that doubt of the Bodhisattvas is causing them great damage, and that they will lose great benefit. Thus you should have total belief in all the Buddha's supreme wisdom. Maitreya asked, Why do the living beings in this world, though they cultivate good deeds, not seek rebirth into that land? The Buddha said to Maitreya, The wisdom of these living beings is low and weak. In their distinguishing, their wisdom can only reach the heavenly realms. Thus they are not happy and do not seek rebirth into that country. Maitreya asked, Living beings in this world distinguish with delusion and do not seek the pure land. How can they avoid reincarnation? The Buddha said, The good roots they have fostered cannot be detached from the mark, and they do not investigate the Buddha's wisdom. They are deeply indulged in worldly pleasures, and enjoy the blissful rewards of the mundane world. Though they cultivate great benefits, they seek only heavenly rewards. When they are rewarded, everything is replete and perfect, but they cannot transcend the prison of the three realms. If fathers and mothers, husbands and wives, and men and women want to save each other from confinement, yet they cannot discard the wrong view, the king of karma, they will always revolve in the wheel of rebirth and cannot be at ease. You have seen ignorant and slow-witted people who do not plant good roots. They intensify their improper minds with worldly wisdom and eloquence. How can they transcend the great disaster of birth and death? There are some other living beings, though, who have planted good roots and cultivated greatly the field of bliss. But they discriminate on the marks and are deeply attached to affection. They try to transcend the wheel of rebirth, but are unable to do so. If one can foster numerous roots of merits with animita wisdom, keep both one's mind and body pure and clean, stay far away from discrimination, seek rebirth into the pure land, and attain the body of Buddha, this person will surely be born into that Buddha land and will be permanently liberated. Chapter 42 The Rebirth of the Bodhisattvas into the Pure Land Maitreya Bodhisattva addressed the Buddha Now in this Saha world and other Buddha lands, how many non regressive Bodhisattvas will be born into the land of ultimate bliss? The Buddha told Maitreya, In this world there will be 72 billion Bodhisattvas who have made offerings to countless Buddhas and who have planted numerous roots of virtue of merits. They will surely be born into that land. The number of Bodhisattvas of Hinayana who have practiced merits and virtues and will definitely be born into that country is incalculable.
Not only will the Bodhisattvas from my Buddha country be born into that country, but Bodhisattvas from other Buddha lands also will be. From the illuminating far Buddha country, 180 billion Bodhisattvas will be, will be born into that land. From the treasure store Buddha country in the northeast, there are 9 billion non-regressive Bodhisattvas who will surely be born into that land. From the measureless sound Buddha country, the bright and radiant Buddha country, the dragon diva Buddha country, the victory force Buddha country, the lion Buddha country, the apart from defilement Buddha country, the virtuous chief Buddha country, the kind king Buddha country, the flower canopy Buddha country, the number of the non-regressive bodhisattvas who will surely be born into that land can number in a few hundred billion or a few thousand billion or even myriad billions. The twelfth Buddha country is called Unsurpassed Flower. In that country there are numberless bodhisattvas who are all non-regressive. They are wise and valiant and have made offerings to countless Buddhas. With great vigour they have vowed to attain Mahayana. In just seven days they can gather in the Dharma of non-regression that the other bodhisattvas have cultivated for 100 billion kalpas. All these bodhisattvas will definitely be born into that land. The thirteenth country is called Abhetri. In that Buddha country there are 79 billion great bodhisattvas. The number for the lesser bodhisattvas and monks are incalculable and they will all be born into that land. It will take endless eons just to say the names of the Buddhas and those bodhisattvas in the ten directions who will be born into that land. Chapter 43 Nata Hinayana The Buddha told Maitreya, Observe those bodhisattvas, mahasattvas. How do they obtain the great benefit? If there is a good man or good woman who upon hearing Buddha Amitabha's name can bring forth single mindfulness of aspiration in seeking refuge in Buddha Amitabha and revering him and cultivating as outlined in the sutra, you should know that this person will gain great benefits and obtain the merits and virtues previously described. There is no lowliness in this person's mind and he is not arrogant. His good roots will be accomplished and advanced. You should know that this person is not a Hinayana and he is the foremost follower in my Dharma. Therefore I am telling you who are the gods, humans, people in this world and Asuras that you should all joyously practice, bring forth a rare mind and respectfully regard this sutra as a teacher. If you want to help countless living beings quickly dwell on non-regression and see the vastly adorned and supremely formed Buddha country that is replete with the merits and virtues of that Buddha, you should help them be vigorous in listening to this Dharma door. For seeking this Dharma, one should not have a mind of regression and flattery. If one falls into the blazing fire, one should not be doubtful or regretful. Why? Those incalculable bodhisattvas are all seeking this subtle and wonderful Dharma door, and they respectfully listen to it and do not disobey. Many bodhisattvas want to listen to this sutra but are unable to. Thus, you should seek this Dharma. Chapter 44. Receive the Prediction of the Attainment of Bodhi In the future, even when the proper Dharma ends, there will still be living beings who have fostered numerous good roots and made offerings to boundless Buddhas. By the augmentation of the thus come one's awesome power, these living beings can obtain such a vast Dharma door. They gather it in and uphold it. Thus they will acquire the vast wisdom of all wisdom. They will greatly and capably understand the Dharma and obtain great joy. They will extensively speak of the Dharma to others and constantly enjoy their cultivation. Those good men and good women, if they have sought in the past or now seek, or will seek in the future for this Dharma, will all receive good benefits. You should contentedly dwell on it without any doubt. In order to foster good roots, one should constantly cultivate and allow no doubt and hindrance, so one will not fall into the prisons which are formed by various kinds of precious jewellery. Ajita, the great awesome virtuous beings such as these can bring about the vastness of Buddha Dharma of other Dharma doors. Because they have not heard this Dharma, a hundred million bodhisattvas fall back from perfect complete enlightenment. If there is a living being who can write, make offerings to, uphold, recite, or in an instant speak this sutra to others, or exhort others to listen to it and let them have no afflictions, or even think about that Buddha land and its merits and virtues day and night, that person will attain the non-regression of the supreme way. When that person approaches the end of his life, even if the whole three thousand great thousand world systems are enveloped in great fires, he can still transcend and be born into that country.